Yo, what's good, everybody? It is your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What Ifs, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. This is the finale of What If Deku had a Minecraft quirk. As always, if you enjoy, please leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. Um, I have a lot to go through um, in this in this part, but I wanted it to be the last one, and then tomorrow will be the movie, and uh, or the next video will be the movie, and then we'll get on to the next series, which I have no idea what I'm doing next. But we'll figure it out as we go along. Um, yeah, that's really all I got to say. I don't want to waste much more of your time. And I want to get right into the what if. Let's get it. Azuku Midoriya and Mirio Togata are in face-to-face -face with Overhaul. Overhaul stands there genuinely menacingly. And, well, the person that runs from Overhaul would be a little girl by the name of Aerie. Every would be scared, terrified, borderline just completely um, kind of losing her mind. At the end of the day, she would be freaking out, thinking that she's going to get other people or even herself hurt. She knows what happens. Um, she knows, like, you know, what's going on. And she knows that there's a lot of things attached to basically her being kidnapped and her being kind of hurt along the way. So she doesn't want these other people to be hurt as well. But Azuka Midoriya, all he's thinking about is a way to get Eri out of there ASAP. So really, Azuku is kind of thinking the opposite of what Mirio is at the moment. Where Mirio is kind of thinking, well, let me calm the situation down. Let me figure this out. Let me stop what's happening. And let me um, also just well, allow Overhaul to basically leave. And Azuku's not all about that. He's thinking to himself that he, all he wants to do is save this little girl and he's going to do it by any means necessary, like straight up by any means necessary. So he begins to contemplate, how is he going to do this? I mean, yes, he could immediately kind of leave, teleport away, right, with, um, with the girl, but it won't really help him to the degree that um, he needs to. Now, he has something that he has been thinking about for a while, something that is interesting, but he's not sure how it's going to work, and it's kind of been sitting there for, let's just say, quite a while. Now, Azuku has this plan right at UA, and it seems to be an interesting one, because he actually has a chamber that is currently having a floating um, ender pearl in it, and as it's sitting there, it's just waiting for one lever one little pull and well what's gonna happen is he's going to teleport there with whoever is with him or whoever is kind of attached to him or he's holding and he's thinking to himself he could use it to save airy for the most part grab her run away whatever but then he's leaving mirio on his own so how is he going to approach this so he decides that he's going to do something a little bit different he takes out a potion and he basically splashes it on Eri. Eri begins to levitate, and Azuku would jump in front of Overhaul. Overhaul would immediately tell him to stop what he's doing, like ASAP, or he's going to basically regret it, and he would be, uh, you know, killed. In which Azuku, well, he's not afraid of him at all. He is all go, no breaks. He's ready to take on Overhaul if need be, but here's the thing. Now he's dealing with a totally odd scenario and a different one at that, right? So he watches as Airy floats up and immediately Overhaul will attack Azuku. Azuku would then throw an Ender Pearl as far as possible in the direction where he wants to go. And then he would try to duck Overhaul and grab him. As he grabs him, he would throw potions on him of slowness, weakness, anything he can so that he can basically benefit from whatever Overhaul's feeling. Azuku would drink a just a quick little um, kind of like bucket of milk being that he actually can drink it pretty quick which is um, ironic enough because it is a giant bucket of milk but he's able to eat it or drink it very quickly and he's able to have them or have his his potion effects cleansed because he was too close to overhaul in the first place then De Pearl would land and this would kind of disorientate um, overhaul just a little bit. At the end of the day, this is a very odd thing to happen. It's something, it's just something that he's not used to, right? He's definitely not used to some stuff like this. 
So it kind of just over, uh, disorientates him a little bit and they're closer to where the lever currently is. Azuku would throw another Ender Pearl as it lands, Overhaul would try and touch Azuku once again. But as he does, he would only touch the armor that Azuku has, and it would only degrade it to a certain extent, the armor protecting Azuku massively from the quirk of Overhaul. And as this is a realization that Overhaul, Overhaul, Overhaul excuse me, is having, he begins to realize that he needs to find a way to get through this armor. But as that next Ender Pearl would land, he would be very near the lever, throwing Overhaul toward the lever, and would then grab him once again, flying with his elytra, and would try to restrict his hands. He would smack the lever as they're both teleported to a different spot and a different place. And this place, well, is UA High School. But this place is something that they've been working on quite a bit, especially with the resources that Izuku has been providing them. This place is a quarantined area for heroes and also other people that eliminate your quirk entirely. So when Izuku gets there, they both no longer have their quirks. But Izuku's body is different. Izuku's body is already evolved to the point where he's already superhuman and his, his quirk basically no longer affects him in that way. So he goes one-on-one -on -one with Overhaul in more or less a cage that is restricted with your quirk, the quirk no longer actually working or your quirk no longer working. And he basically takes him on one-on-one -on -one, and he absolutely destroys him. Azuku puts him on the back foot immediately and everybody begins converging. A lot of heroes converge on the area as well and they're able to take down Overhaul, restrict him and put him in a spot where he cannot come out of ever again, throwing him in prison and putting him away for good. But obviously they are dealing with some other issues and Azuku is currently flying his way back to Eri to make sure that he can basically pluck her out of the sky. Now, luckily, there were people there, and they're watching her float up, and they're trying to construct some way to save her, in which Mirio is doing the same thing as well, but Izuku would come flying in with only seconds to spare, and Izuku would actually grab her out of the air and actually apologize to her for kind of allowing her to float up so high. She would ask what happened to Overhaul, that what happened to the, the crazy guy with the mask, in which Izuku says that he handled it that she's safe now and nothing can harm her again. She would be absolutely shocked to hear this, but of course their job is not done just yet. And Izuku helps her get to the hospital, helps her get some, get some healing and to feel better and stuff like that overall. But they also have to invade the overhaul base or the Shihazaikai base, which will be a lot easier now that overhaul is already in prison. So they raid the base, and for the most part, it goes pretty smoothly. Nobody's really a massive threat. And with Izuku there, being able to bolster up all of his teammates and all of his um, fellow heroes, he's able to kind of give them strength, speed, resistance, and everything you can possibly think of. Literally everything you can possibly think of. Now, after all of these things are now benefiting them, and now that he's, well, they're benefiting from those potion effects entirely they're able to siege the base of the Sheha Zaikai and they're able to take them down entirely completely flattening the goals of overhaul and flattening everything that the Sheha Zaikai has basically stood for now that the Sheha Zaikai is now done and in the dust they go back on to basically doing normal hero school things and that has a lot to do with class 1a versus class 1b but we all know that Izuku in this fight well it's not gonna be an easy one for class 1b Izuku is at a totally different level there is no number or time of planning you could possibly do that could really put them on the same level but guess what Someone on, well, you know, Class 1B is very interesting in this regard, being that of Monoma. Monoma is going to be able to steal or utilize the quirk that Izuku has. But here's the thing. There's a lot more to Izuku's quirk than just stealing it. He would get the base idea of it, maybe being able to grab some different items or blocks. But being able to actually take Izuku's quirk and then utilizing it to its fullest extent it's not going to work. It's not even going to be close. 
and it's not even going to be funny how badly he can mess up with it. Azuku would have, well, himself, he would have um, Mineta, he would have Mina, and also Ochako on his team. And he would splash them with strength, with speed, with resistance, with regeneration, every potion that, that is positive for them, he would be utilizing. And he would be going against Class 1B, like, like Reiko, like um, Shoda, like Monoma, like um, Yui Kodai, and also Shinso, who is trying to get into the class. A 4 versus 5 seems to be unfair, but let's be honest, it's unfair for the people who have 5. Because Azuku begins to spawn iron golems, begins to begins to ride on a wither, and begins to just lay siege on them, knocking them out quicker than you could possibly imagine, and then tying them up, capturing them very easily as well, and teleporting them almost instantly with an ender pearl on his own. Azuku makes it look extremely easy and makes the entirety of this little five-man group look like an absolute joke but with this training session over and done with we know that azuku and class and the entirety of the class is going on to different ventures azuku continues working with sir Nida's agency but also takes on some part time with endeavor's agency working with endeavor bakugo and shoto todoroki but also just working with as many people as possible. Now, Azuku benefits from journeying from agency to agency massively, right? He gets more notoriety, he gets a lot more famous, but also at the end of the day, he gets a lot more experience. Now, experience is very important, especially with what's coming up very, very soon. Because what they don't know is that in the shadows, currently Shigaraki is brewing up something that is terrifying. Shigaraki is brewing up something that could really take over the entirety of Japan. He is now intertwining himself with massive amounts of quarks. He is now basically gaining full control over Gigantomachia, and he has now more or less taken on the entirety of the Metal Liberation Front and now has them at his beck and call. So this fight, yes, it may be months away, but is a fight that is bound and destined to happen and something that is going to be absolutely spectacular in terms of just a an explosive battle but now when they learn of what's happening and they learn that they need to be training and working and trying to figure out a plan well this is when azuku learns of one for all and when azuku learns that mirio togata is the user of one for all or the successor of one all might but this doesn't matter to him necessarily azuku knows that there's more to his quirk and he has a couple months to figure it out he needs to learn he needs to figure it out and he needs to know everything about it azuku tells them all that they need to utilize the chamber that cancels quarks entirely and he needs to figure out a way to use it to perfection. Azuku would research, would look into and try to learn as much as possible, eventually learning about commands. And this is when he would start inputting different things, different coding, and eventually he would learn of something that would revolutionize his own quirk and take over everything something world shattering something dimensional shattering he thought utilizing and using and being able to tame some of the monstrous creatures within minecraft were gonna be enough the wither the ender dragon people or creatures like that he is able to utilize them but this is totally different something he couldn't even imagine and he would go and utilize it and learn about it for the next months to come and they would have a plan, a plan that would well, would start with Zuku on the front lines, ready to take everybody on. They would lie. He would line them all up with withers and ender dragons, people being able to ride them with saddles that were commanded in. And he's able they were able to ride them to perfection and be able to kind of lay siege on any villains that need be. The villains have no idea what's coming and what's going to hit them, especially with a giant monster like Gigantomachia, the extra reinforcements of dragons and withers are going to help massively. And on top of that, Azuku Midoriya has a plan to take down Shigaraki, and he doesn't, or Shigaraki doesn't realize that he's about to hit a wall, 
a wall that is dimensional shattering and a wall that cannot be climbed because Azuku would face down Shigaraki after they after they lay siege to a giant basically army of Nomus and the Meta Liberation Front and Azuku, Mirio and also Bakugo would take on Shigaraki but as the time would tick and as time would fade away Mirio would look to Azuku to to change the tide of the battle and that would be one thing that he pulls out he pulls out an ipad and he begins moving and typing things in and as he does he realizes something he realizes that this right here with one click it's going to be over that everything that they now fight for everything that they were ready and prepared for he can he can finish this off but he knows that with that one click he would become a murderer and someone he doesn't want to be so he decides to change the command and to tp shigaraki to a room isolated and a room contained where his quirks will no longer work and no longer be be usable azuku clicks it and he teleports away and for def or, and for definite assurance he would be begin to actually get rid of shigaraki's quirks entirely commanding or co using a command block and command strips to basically command Shigaraki's more or less body and and entire entire kit of quirks to dissipate and disappear. Shigaraki would sit there in isolation trying to utilize anything, trying to break his way free, but he cannot. He is stuck, he is trapped, and he is no longer able to be a threat. The, uh, the other bit of the army um, of Gigantomachia. Gigantomachia is now falling with the help of Midnight and with dragons and withers and, and creatures all alike. With the Meta Liberation Front falling short as always. And with them finally, finally being captured by the heroes. And with the heroes standing tall on this day, everybody around the world is watching as Japan was able to fend off from one of the greatest villains alive or at least the protege of the greatest or one of the greatest villains alive azuku midoriya will ha will have now carved his name into japan's heroic future and it seems like nothing will stop right now azuku's powers continue to transcend and frankly they're almost borderline godlike being able to control some of these things that are out within the world as if he can manipulate the actual law and order of the world is something that is to be awed at. And there's someone else in the, the United States that can do something similar, but just not on the scale that Izuku can really do it or just maybe not the same way he could do it. Azuku Midoriya will continue down this path of hero work as he continues his studies at UA High School and as rivalries would sprout out and as, as the rankings would climb and as Azuku would even gain and, and prosper his own agencies, his hero journey, well, it will continue on even past this story. But for now, this is where the story will end. And if you enjoyed, please show some love Leave a like, leave a sub, and leave a comment down below. All that good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the series. And like I said, if you did, please show some love in the ways I said before. And on top of that, well, let me know what you guys want to see next. What, what maybe um, kind of videos or series or anything you guys would like to see from, from me in the near future. Let me know. I will uh, get on that ASAP or try my best to get on it ASAP. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope all you guys have an amazing day. Later.